hi guys welcome back to my channel this video will be more like a vlog type of video as you can see i'm basically sitting on my floor in my living room because i want to talk about something that i hope is very useful for you we will talk today about pests how pests affect our plants it's specifically about one type of pest that we can have on our plants that's very very hard to get rid of and that this pest basically really damages your collection so i'll talk a little bit about it i will show you some signs of how this pest uh, has affected my plants how i'm treating them and uh, what i'm doing about it basically so i'll show you a few different examples of house plants and orchids and how this pest affected them but before i show you everything i pre-recorded one video about when i discovered this pest and i done the first treatment but at this time i wasn't sure about exactly what it was so i will let you watch this now and I will come back with some updates. I hope you enjoy it. And if you do, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Uh, and let's start this video. So I have here my two Miltoniopsis. These need immediate action. Can you see these spottings? So I was really scared. I have that for a while. In all of my Miltoniopsis, there is one in my bedroom as well that has the same spottings. Can you see these? So in my, on my mind, I was like, oh, I have some virus, some problem with the watering. Uh, they have roots, they produce new pseudobulbs, but they keep having this, this kind, this very, very, very weird spotting. I was like, oh, I'm, I may lose all of them. It's something that I'm doing. What I'm doing com that's completely wrong, you know? Then suddenly, today I was watering one of my cattleyas in my bedroom. And the disc I had the same type of spotting and I was like, oh, weird. Something is weird here. So do you know what happened? I noticed tiny, tiny insects on the leaves of my cattleya. And I realized, because I've never seen an insect here, I said, no, it's not. Some types of virus, definitely. No, it's not. It's an insect. Maybe the thick spider mite, the red spider mite, I don't know the name, but looks like something like that. It's so badly aff affected. Look at that. So anyway, what I'm going to do now is show you how I'm going to treat these plants. Because honestly, I may have to spray all of my plants in my bedroom, all of the plants in the living room. But these ones I need to act immediately. I don't know how they managed to actually produce a power flower spike. And uh, with this camera, I can't show you the, the bugs, but I will do it with my phone. I don't have experience with spider mite. It's the first time that I see it in my collection, actually. It's been a while because I have these spottings for a while now, but I think Miltoniopsis were the most affected plants. So I'm gonna get my leaf shine. I'm gonna get some paper. So guys, what I'm gonna do here is, I don't know if you can see, I have my spray bottle here and uh, I'm gonna spray them I will spray from a distance. My spray bottle uh, has some issues here at the top. The sprayer has some issues. So it's coming with a more oil that I would like. So I may have to spray some soap and water on it afterwards. I'm not sure yet, but I'm gonna do it because the only thing that I have here at the moment and I know that I have to address it immediately. Unfortunately, it has two flower spikes and I love Miltoniopsis so much. Yeah, it's one of my favorite flowers. I'm gonna be honest. I think the flowers are huge, so gorgeous. And I'm gonna also spray everything that are that is closer to these plants because there is no point in cleaning up these plants and that don't clean up the things that are there with them. I'm gonna do something that I know that is weird, but I have here some toilet paper. As a piece of advice, I would say, if you have too many plants, try to spray them often. But as you can see, my plant, <laughs> my plant won't be very healthy. The flowers won't be healthy. 
because of the insect. So I don't think that's gonna be the only time that I will have to spray it. I'm gonna probably have to spray it more often. Something interesting about these insects is that it becomes some stick substance stuck to come out from the leaves like some salt or whatever and it's very different from thrips i have experience with thrips thrips don't do this kind of damage on the leaves it's very 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 different I can try to do some close-ups later for you to to see what i mean but yeah i was basically eating the leaves and creating these kind of little bubbles or i don't know how you can call them but it's full of full of insects and I have no idea. The thing is because they are so tiny and it's so hard to see them. So I haven't seen the insect. And I was honestly, I looked at these leaves so many times and to this plant and I was like, what I'm doing wrong here? You know, I know that they attract pests a lot. So I was pretty aware of that. I was looking at them, like trying to keep on top of, but I, I haven't sprayed them just to keep an eye or to prevent pests. I haven't doing any preventive care. Maybe that was my fault. You see, <laughs> I want to share that with you because you may see some time of weird spottings on your leaves like these ones. And maybe you think, oh my gosh, I have never seen these. What is these? These are some type of pests. Because I don't have experience with a spider mite, I will do some research and I'm going to come back to close this, this video uh, later and I will update you if I see something else showing on them. The thing with Oncidiums and Miltoniopsis and Miltonias and anyway, all of the things that are similar to Oncidiums is that we have so many leaves and pseudobulbs. Treating it is a little bit trickier because I know that insects can hide underneath the leaves. So what I'm gonna have to do, honestly, is gonna be keep an eye on it, keep spraying, I probably in a few weeks time, I will spray it again. I'm gonna water all the leaves now, but not only, after I spraying all the leaves now, I'm gonna also spray everything that is closer to these plants, everything. I'm gonna basically clean up all the leaves in the other plants in there. Luckily, they are not with all my plants. They used to sit on the toilet and they never had any problem. During winter, I brought them here. So I think I have some uh, dendrobiums in my collection that may have this sort of stuff as well. So I think it just spread and attacked and Miltoniopsis um, got more damage than the other plants. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna give this plant a big shower. I'm gonna water the leaves as well. And that's all that I'm gonna do for now. And let's hope for the best. <laughs> so looking back to that video, you probably noticed that I thought it could be spider mites because I've never had an infestation of spider mites. So I have no idea how they affect the plants. Uh, and that was my first suspicion because as I showed you, I thought that plants had some virus or some disease that I wasn't aware of because I couldn't see anything moving and I was inspecting and not finding any pests. What happened was, I was watering my plants in my bedroom last week and I noticed one cattleya that had the same type of spotting on the leaves and looking at it, I saw something moving but something very, very tiny that I couldn't actually see with my eyes properly. So I was like, what is that? Oh my gosh, what is that? This is then this is something that is munching on the leaves of my plant. So I recorded that video. Turns out that it wasn't spider mind. I have someone on Instagram that messaged saying, hey, I think it's thrips. And I was like, oh really? Because I had thrips infestation before. And usually I can see them. I know that the thrips, they have different states of life, but I, I know them very well. I thought I knew them very well because I had many infestations of thrips before. Then I start researching and I, I try to record with my phone the insect moving. And I notice something. With my phone, actually, the zoom is not really, really good. So I could see something moving. You can see like a grain of sand moving. But I noticed that it has like a cylinder form, shape, cylinder shape. So it was an insect that has a cylinder shape. And spider mites doesn't have a cylinder shape. So I was start thinking, oh, maybe this is actually real thrips. 
it didn't look like an insect, you know, I couldn't see the wings or anything like that, but it was very tiny and it wasn't black. It was more like a beige, reddish, brownish color. So I took my husband's phone because he has a better zoom and I could zoom it and it's actually thrips. You can see clearly that it is thrips. I'm showing you this, this video now. I don't know, <laughs> I'm happy that I discovered what it was, but thrips are very, very difficult insect. So before I show you what I, how I'm treating it, I wanna tell you a little bit about thrips. So I don't know if you know a lot about them, but just to clarify, there are many species of thrips, so they can vary a little bit in size, you know, and color, which makes a huge difference. And uh, I also noticed there are different patterns on the leaves of your plants when thrips attack them. That's something for you to bear in mind. I was very used to one type of infestation and uh, I knew exactly how to spot them. But with my Miltoniopsis and these Cattleyas, I discovered that, yeah, there are more. So basically it destroys the each munch from the cells, munches the cells of the plants, so sucks the substances. So it will kill the tissue of the plant. And that's why you notice the discoloration and the pattern of how the plant, the, the insect munch on your plant. And it's basically destroyed part of the leaves of my Miltoniopsis and I think it will take a while to recover. And because this one, my Miltoniopsis, is very, very tiny compared to the ones that I'm used to, that I have here in my living room, I think it's even harder because I need to, to make sure I get completely rid of all of it because it spreads pretty quickly as well. Before I tell you about the treatment, I'm gonna show you plants that have been affected by thrips. And uh, first of all, the common signs of thrips. So the ones that I have noticed on my plants before, and then I'm gonna compare to the ones that you have seen in the beginning of this video. And then you're gonna have to basically, is to give you an idea what to look for. Maybe you experienced that with your collection. Maybe you see this pattern on the leaves or on the flowers and you don't know what it is. I hope it can help you. Uh, if it, it is thrip, you have to act pretty quickly because they can fly, they multiply very, very quickly quickly and uh, they munch on your plants like that. If you want to get completely rid of them, it will take a little bit of while, at least for me, it's never uh, the easiest process for you to basically exterminate the whole collection of thrips. It's so sad to say, but I have more than one type of thrips inside, I think. So yeah, I'm gonna show you then now I don't know, some signs for you to spot on your plants and maybe you probably have some of these on your plants as well. It can help you to determine, oh, that's probably thrips, so I have to treat it immediately. So let's go. Start with flowers. I don't have the worst spotting and discoloration on the flowers because I, since I learned how to spot them, for me, especially these are white, it's quite easy to notice when we have the black so the most common thrips that I have here, it's like a black dot. You can see them from a distance. Uh, it's much easier than the other one. This is a thrip damage. I hope you can see these as well. Uh, I found some thrips in here, so I know these are thrips. Usually Phalaenopsis, they are quite, I'm gonna say that they attract thrips. I found many thrips in my Phalaenopsis flowers. But for example, these ones are here as well, these Puffiopedemons. And uh, to be honest, I don't see any thrips damage on, on them. So I think it prefers Phalaenopsis than Puffiopedemons, at least in my experience. So let's investigate some leaves. I start here. This one is my Oncidian Sherry Baby. Can you see that? All the discoloration on this leaf. This is definitely caused by thrips. I just found some some new thrips on the new growths so oops it's not fo focus please this is also caused by thrips um i have more wait and see can you see here this is also caused by thrips usually vandas are quite strong it's the last plant that they attack at least in my experience it's never the first one that they choose to go to, but I have some very, very sad news and stories. <sighs> Let me, can you see that? That's a new growth of a Cattleya. 
that has been completely, completely tacked by Fritz. All of these white colorations here, it was, it was infested. They love munching on new growths of plants, especially cattleyas. Uh, the mature growth is not attacked as badly as the newest ones, as you can see here. So that's something that you have to definitely look for. Let me give you a similar example. Can you see this? This is my dendrobium. It was a younger growth before, and it's, it's full of thrips damage. If you're hearing some water noise on the background, that's the aquarium, I'm sorry. Again, can you see this border here? That's being like destroyed, a little bit munched. This was also caused by thrips. And I have this one, Phelanopsis, was infested as well because this is a new leaf and uh, it's everything is, I think, flexible and young. Then no, there is a dark spot in there. I don't believe that we have any any thrips that's alive in here because I treated that a lot. But if you look to the discoloration of the leaves here on the newest leaves, this is also caused by thrips. Strange spots on the newest leaves was always munched by, by thrips. So now I'm gonna move to house plants. I'm gonna be honest, this anturian is one of the most common ones. These are the fish, just to let you know. My gosh, it attracts thrips like nothing. It's so hard for me to treat it. Look at that. Uh, it's always full of thrips underneath the leaves. So the leaves, they, they are full of discoloration here and there. And the fact is, because there are so many leaves and uh, we can see the stems of the, of the plants as well, it simply adore, adores this plant. Look, I have a sad story that a new alopecia that's growing the first leaf. So there was two thrips in here. Look, they have mounted the newest leaves. They have also attacked my Hoyas. I don't believe I have any, any anything else here. The plants were badly affected and others were okay. So let's move here, very slowly. Can you see that against the light? Thrips, yes, yes, you guessed it right. Uh, and one of the plants that I didn't notice, but when I discovered, it was so sad, because I was looking so nice. Can you see the discoloration here? That's not a variegation, that's actually thrips damage. Talking about orchids, dendrobians, they attacked thrips and paths like nothing. Uh, the younger growths of Cattleyas are their favorite. And also Oncidians and things like uh, Oncidians with pseudobulbs and plant of leaves. They love, they love this type of plants. I'm going to show you the Cattleya, one of the Cattleyas that is badly affected by the other type of thrips. And uh, just to conclude how this pest can affect my plants, Still have some beautiful blooms, but I'm a little bit sad because I need to treat everything, so I don't know if they will last a long, long time. But yeah, one second, let me show you the cattleyas in my bedroom, and then I will tell you how I treated everything. So, this is the weirdest type of spotting that I didn't know which was caused by thrips because it has this black pattern. So I thought it was some sort of virus anyway. But this Cattleya has been severely attacked by that tiny one that I mentioned. Oops. Um, on the Miltoniopsis that I showed you is the same thing. So basically it's already very dehydrated. Uh, I bought it as a cutting a long time ago. But all of these are caused by this tiny, tiny type of thrips. And I have a Miltoniopsis affected with these. Uh, one oxygen that was close to that Miltoniopsis as well. At least now you know how to spot some different types of thrips damage on your plant. Now that I've showed you some of the most probably common signs of thrips, 
if you're not seeing the tiny insect munching on your plants, you can look for these, these signs on the leaves and you may, or flowers, and you may discover that you have thrips in your collection. So now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the treatment, what I'm doing and how I'm treating it. And as you saw with the Miltoniopsis, I sprayed everybody with leaf shine. And to be honest, I need something that I could treat everything at once. So what I decided to do, as a caveat here, and uh, just to explain my method and why I'm not going, you can definitely buy pesticides so many places that will probably help you to get rid of these insects. If you're comfortable using them, please go and buy them. Here in the UK, they're not expensive at all. There are some of them that they will tell you that they are not toxic or anything. I don't know. The problem is, I live inside a flat and I think they do pollute the water and that they are pretty toxic for the environment. So I'm not sure, I don't feel comfortable using them at the moment. I have some mineral oil. I went online, you can look for that as well. There is something that's called horticultural oil. So if you go online, you'll find a recipe as well, but I will let it down below in the description. Anyway, what I decided to do is to go with mineral oil. If you go to any drugstore here in the UK, if you, if you go to Bilco or maybe even Superdrug or Boots, you will find that type of baby oil. That's like a Johnson & Johnson, they, they produce that a lot. So that oil is perfect. That's what I've done. I got that oil and I mixed that with dishwashing liquid that's basic, basically detergent. The measure was one cup of the oil, you mix it with one quarter of a cup of dishwashing liquid detergent. You will have then what they called a white liquid, but that you shouldn't use that. That's not the solution that we will use to treat your plant. <laughs> Please don't do it. What you have to do is get this one cup of your mineral oil with one quarter of detergent. You place everything in a, preferably in a glass pot that you can save up to use later. You will mix that very, very well. When you have mixed that, you basically will use that to dilute in water to spray your plants. So, as I said, I'm doing, I'm using my oil but also I got something from the Royal Horticultural Society here in the UK. I found this product on Amazon. I haven't tested it yet, but I would definitely test it on my Miltoniopsis because I'm not completely convinced that, they, that I have killed all the insects. So I will do it in a week and I can give you a feedback later. But if you are interested, instead of creating your own solution and everything, and you don't like pesticides, I found this one. It's a pesticide free, look, I'm not sponsored or anything. My channel is very small, by the way. It's just that I found it on Amazon and um, it's basically a red made solution. It's, it's pesticide free and it's for you to control bug as well. Ideally, you should get rid of them straight away when you see one. So let me show you, I'm gonna spray one right now and uh, I will film that for you to see and then I will wrap up this video. Let's go. But basically, you can really, really spray everything. Deliberately spray everything. You have to, to be honest. And it's really important that you investigate. I can't do that holding the phone, but I will do after I finish filming. But one thing that I always do is I look inside the leaves here and I need to spray the whole leaf, you know, both sides of the leaf. I have to make sure the whole leaf, for example, you can see that here it's not, I don't have products inside, especially when you are dealing with Miltoniopsis, for example, another type of oncidians and oncidians type orchids. It's really important that you spray the whole plant. And I would advise you if you have a bad infestation like I do, that you repeat the treatment in one week to make sure you get rid of everything. So uh, to finish this video, to wrap up this video, uh, I changed it to where my Miltoniopsis are. Basically, if I have watched uh, one of my first videos about how I keep my collection, that's my cool growing space for my intermediate and cool 
flowering plants. They are not looking uh, the best. This one here is red flower spike, but it's gone. Sadly, uh, these two are the worst affected uh, plants. The worst affected Miltoniopsis. So, yeah, I don't know. I hope they survive. What I'm gonna do is I sprayed them this week but I have to spray them again. But just to conclude, be careful if you see strips in your collection because they spread pretty quickly. Every time that you see something different on leaves or on the flowers, uh, inspect for bugs first before suspecting of any other stuff. I did investigate it, but I didn't see it because it's very, very tiny and probably lack of experience as well. That's what the tips that I want to give you and try to go with the methods that you feel more comfortable with to treat your plants, but do treat them straight away. The moment that you find the pests, go there and treat your plants. It's very important, otherwise you may lose them. So yeah, so that's what I wanna show you today. I hope this information was useful. I hope you have learned something and I hope it helps you to keep your plants health and safe. That was it. I know that in nature, they are subject to insects and everything, but nature has its own way of balancing things out. And when we are inside our homes, it's very difficult because we don't have other insects to compete with these ones. And uh, it's basically our environment. So we do our best that we can to protect uh, the bees that we have inside it. So yeah, so that's everything that I wanna tell you today. I hope you have enjoyed this type of content. If you did, please, Hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, I will love to see you here again and leave a comment down below if you have thrips in your collection before and uh, your experience with it, how you get rid of them, I would love to hear more from you and thank you very much for watching this video and I see you soon, bye bye.